Welcome to Regis Algebra 2. This is the chapter or the test 2 review. So I'll be going through each of these problems one at a time. Go ahead and do your own corrections along on your test. What I would suggest is at least watching through every problem you missed and then making sure that you could take out a blank sheet of paper and do those problems again on your own. Pay particular attention to problems 21 through 24 as you will have an extra quiz on that material. So for this first one you want to do what's in parentheses here first. I'll do these step by step. So I'll go ahead and go down. This will be equal to 5 times 5 minus 7 over 2 minus 5 on the next step, I'll go ahead and do this multiplication because of order of operations. This becomes 25 minus 7 over 2 minus 5. And finally, doing the subtraction out on the top, you're going to get 18. On the bottom, you're going to get minus 3. Doing the division, you get 6, and it will be negative. This next problem is a substitution, so we'll first off substitute everything. Just like that. Now we'll go ahead and do these four multiplications. We'll get 12 over negative 8 plus negative 4 over negative 12. For the next step here, we'll divide, we'll simplify both of our fractions here. So we'll uh, get dividing a 4 into the top and the bottom. For the first fraction, we're going to get three, uh, negative 3. We'll take the negative to the numerator over 2. And negative times Neg or negative divided by negative is positive, so dividing each in the second fraction by 4, we're going to get 1 third. Now to be able to add these together, we need, of course, a common denominator. That common denominator will be uh, 6, so we'll go negative 9 plus um, um, negative 9, 6, multiplying both the top and the bottom by 3 in the first one, multiplying the top and the bottom by 2 in the second, we're going to get plus 2 6. Now just adding the numerators, negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7 6, and that's a perfectly good answer there. For the next problem, uh, we have only x terms, so they're all like terms, so I'll add up the positive ones, which looks like all but one of them. Yep. Okay, so 2 plus 5 is 7, 17, 23x. The negative is just the minus 13x, and 23 minus 13 is 10x. For number 4, the first trick is, of course, to distribute the negative sign. So we'll take away the parentheses in the first one. Just copying everything very carefully. Distributing the negative sign gives me minus 2a squared plus 3ab plus b squared minus a negative. Now we're going to gather like terms. We're going to gather these two together. 5 minus 2 is 3a squared minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1 AB and plus 1 plus 1 is plus 2 B squared. And that's all you need for that one. Okay, so we've got innermost parentheses. We'll tackle those first, just there and there. By distributing the negative sign, we'll get 12A minus. minus 6b minus 3c. I'm removing that inner parenthesis. Keep copying. Minus 5a plus, minus a negative is a plus 2b. 
minus the negative is a plus 6. And that's it. Now we will, um, we've got a choice at this point. You could either go ahead and um, distribute out that next negative, or you can gather like terms. I tend to gather like terms. So I'll look for, let's see, my A terms will simply be, uh, let's, let's just copy what's ahead here, 12A minus. Okay, my A terms are going to be just the 1, minus 5A. My B terms are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 B terms. We're going to have minus 6, 3 and minus 6 is minus 9 there. And here we're going to have plus 3 minus 9 plus 3 is minus 6B. My C term, I only have 1, minus 3C. And my numbers are going to be 4 minus 8 and 6. Adding the positives, I'll get 4 and 6, or 10 minus 8 is 2. So now I'll distribute my negative sign. That minus a negative is a plus. Minus a negative is a plus. Minus a negative is a plus. Minus a positive is a negative. Okay, need to gather up a little bit more here. This will be 17a plus 6b plus 3c minus 2. So laborious, but the basic concepts are pretty straightforward. Let's go to the next page. Number 6 says a plus c times x minus a minus c times x. Typically, we see this written with the x in front rather than behind the what's in the parentheses, but I wanted to make sure you could recognize that it's multiplication either way. So this is a distribution going in that direction and another distribution in that direction. This becomes ax plus cx minus... I'll just... Uh, well, I could do this in two, one or two steps, but I'll just do it this way. AX minus CX. And now, t distributing my negative sign, I'm going to get AX plus CX minus AX minus negative is plus um, CX. These two will cancel out, and you're going to get CX plus CX or 2CX. We're going to gather like terms, 3m plus 4m is 7m. We're going to divide by 7, and 21 divided by 7, m equals 3. We're going to gather like terms, our x, both x terms. Uh, they both have a common denominator, so I can just add them. Uh, 1x, I mean 1 third plus 5 thirds is 6 thirds, or 2 wholes, so that becomes 2x equals 6, divide by 2, and x equals 3. Okay, the next one's an inequality, but we'll solve it until that very last step where we're going to divide or multiply. We're going to just solve it like normal. These are my like terms. 1 minus 3 is minus 2x. We're going to take our 3 to the other side by subtracting. We don't care about the sign still while we're subtracting, only multiplication or division. So keep the sign the same. 5 minus 3 is 2. And now at this step is where we're multiplying or dividing. So here's where we care about evaluating our um, inequality. So we're going to have to divide by a negative 2. We'll have to divide both sides by a negative, so we will have to flip this. So this leaves me with x is less than 2 over 2. We got a negative, 2 over 2 is 1. Okay, next one, same rules apply. We're going to gather our like terms. 4 minus 6 is minus 2x. We don't care about the sign. We leave it the same until we multiply or divide, which we're doing at this step. We have to divide by negative 2 on both sides. Again, we have to uh, reverse that inequality because we're dividing by a negative. So 
negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1, so we get x is less than or equal to negative 5. For the next problem here, we have a monomial times a monomial. We'll deal with the sign first. A positive times a negative is a negative. We'll deal with the constants. 5 times, we're multiplying here, 5 times 2 is 10. We'll look at our Oops, I don't need that. We'll look at our a's. We have 1 and 3 more. We're, that would be like adding the exponents. Uh, 1 plus 3 is a to the 4th. We have b, 2 b's and 2 b's. That'd be b, 2 plus 2 is 4. And for my c's, I have 3. This would be like having a 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. And that's all to, there is to that. Okay, it looks a little worse here in number 12, but we're going to do the same three processes. We're going to deal with our sign. A negative times a negative is a positive. 4 times 3 is 12. And remember, we're adding exponents. So we've got x to the m plus n. Again, here it's looking more complex, but we're still only multiplying. We'll deal with our signs first. Negative times negative is a positive. We'll deal with our constants next. 4 times 5 is 20. We'll march down in order from alphabetical order. We've got A's. We've got 2 plus 2, or 4. We've got B's. We only have 1. We've got x's. This would be like to the 1 power, to the 1 power. So 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, this will be a distribution for my first term here. A negative times negative is positive. We've got x squared, y squared, z. My second term, we've got a negative times a positive is a negative. We have 1x, y squared, z squared. And negative third term, negative times a positive is a negative, one constant, x squared, 1y, z squared. Okay, this will be a binomial times a binomial, so we'll use FOIL. First terms, we got 3a times 4a, that would be 12a squared. Outer terms, we have 3ACD, inner terms, we have 4ACD, so 3 plus 4 is 7ACD. And then finally, our last terms, we've got CD times CD, that would be C squared, D squared. Again, for 16, we'll use FOIL. First terms, we're going to have 12B squared. Outer terms, we're going to have negative 24b plus 2b, that would be negative 22b, and last terms, we'd have minus 4. For this next one here, go ahead and write it out if you're not comfortable with it. We've got a squared plus b squared times a squared plus b squared, and we'll go ahead and use FOIL. Uh, we've got a squared times a squared, adding exponents, we get a to the fourth. Outer terms, we've got a squared b squared, inner terms, a squared b squared, so that would be 2 a squared b squared. And last terms, add exponents, and you get b to the fourth. For number 18, what we have is a sum and a difference. So my middle term with the... Um, Expression, the A and B are the first and the second, both being the same. So my middle terms will drop out, but let's go ahead and FOIL it. We're going to get for our X term, uh, adding exponents, 2 plus 2 is 4. That's a 4. For my Y terms, 1 plus 1 is 2. My outer is plus 3, X squared Y Z. My inner is minus 3, X squared Y Z. As we said, they drop out, and then my last terms, negative sign, 3 times 3 is 9, z times z is z squared. 
Okay, this is a monomial divided by a monomial. I'll deal with my sign first. It will be negative. I tend to bring that to the numerator. 4 divided by 20 will have a 5 in the denominator. Some of you have slipped that up to the numerator. My a's will subtract our exponents. Uh, 4 minus 2, uh, we have the largest amount in the numerator. So 4 minus 2 is 2. We have the largest amount of b's in the numerator. 3 minus 1 is 2. And we have the largest amount of c's in the numerator. Um, 5 minus 3 is 2. And though it doesn't look very nice, I should have centered that 5. Nevertheless, that's the answer there. For 20, again, we're going to take this denominator and divide it by the first term. We'll get a negative. In that case, the a will remain. One of the x's will cancel. We'll get one more, and the y's will cancel. For my second term, a negative over a negative is going to be a positive. My 2 will remain. My x's will cancel, and one of my y's will cancel. And that's what we end up with. Okay, now 21 was one of the hard ones for you. This is long division. So we just set it up. It has to be in descending order. So order is important. It has to be in descending order by just one of the variables. So let's pick the x variable because it comes first here. So it'll be the x cubed term, then the x squared term, then the x term, then the one without an x. So that's very important. If we had any missing, for instance, if my x squared term were missing, I'd have to insert it and put x, uh, 0 x squared, okay, for 0 for my coefficient. So now, once you've done that, you're asking yourself, how many times do I have to multiply multiply x by how many to get x cubed? And the answer is x squared. Now multiplying back, you're going to get x cubed, but you have to multiply every term. So you have x cubed plus x squared y, just like that. Now you subtract the whole second expression from the first expression up here. The x cubes cancel out. You would always expect that first one to cancel out. And you're going to get x squared y minus x squared y. And in this case, that cancels out also. So that's a 0. So now rather than bringing down, as we typically would, one term, we have to bring down both terms. Why? Because I have two terms over here in my divisor. So I need to have two terms here. So I'll bring down both at the same time. Now I'm asking myself, what do I multiply this x by to get this? And the answer is y squared. So multiplying back, you're going to get xy squared for my first term plus y cubed for my second term. Again, subtracting the whole expression, x squared, xy squared minus xy squared will cancel out, and y cubed minus y cubed would be 0. So this is your answer right here. I would go to that section in the um, chapter and review several like that. Okay, so I am 
um, thought I'd had it on pause, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to solve for n. This is an s equals n over 2 times a plus l. So I need to get rid of everything on the right-hand side but the n. To get rid of this one-half, a, a division by 2, I can multiply both sides by 2. Copy everything else, just like you see it. To get rid of this, this is a multiplication times the n. I'm still trying to solve for the n. This is a multiplication, so I would divide. And that's my answer. Okay, so again, you're thinking through your rules. It's the rules that will help you to do literal equations. So go back and review that section in addition. And finally, we're on our last problem. I actually think that everyone did a good job with this. Um, the last, uh, we're given 52 apples altogether. The red is 8 more than 3 times the green. So if G equals the green apples, then red is going to be 8 more than 3 times the green. Make sense? Now, altogether, we have 52 apples. So, if I ha so I have my green plus my red, and I'll substitute in the expression. So your green plus your red equals your total apples, which is 52. So there's your equation. Most of you had something pretty similar to, though you're, you did sometimes confuse me with your parentheses. But this is really what we're thinking. We're thinking green plus red equals total. Okay, now we just simply add those together. We're going to get 4G plus 8 equals 52. This was not a problem for most of you. 4G, subtracting 8 out, uh, let's see, that'd be 44. And my green apples equals 11. Now, some of you just stopped there, but it asks you for the red apples. So how would I find the red apples? I would plug that 11 back in. Whoa, sorry. Didn't know I could do that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I inadvertently picked up something and moved it. Sorry about that. But So my green is 11, believe it or not. Now take that and you plug it back up here. 3 times 11 is 33 plus 8 more. That'd be 41 for my red apples. And that's your answer.